Hi guys, how's it going? Uh, this is another day, another session of talking with wonderful musicians and friends that I have, luckily, because we're all locked down and we have nothing to do. So content is king, and we're making content. But yeah, uh, we have Keshav Dhar, uh, the ubiquitous, wonderful, you know, top tier mixing, mastering engineer, musician, whatever you call it. Um, and we are just going to talk like we always did. So if you haven't seen this before, I had a conversation with Suish Gabriel and I had a conversation with Tarana Marwa. And this is the third edition. So yeah, how's it been? How's, been, how's it been? How have you been, you know, Good, man. You whiling know. your time? I mean, fortunately, I have a, I have a reasonable amount of uh, stuff going on to keep me occupied. So, I mean, yeah, I'm just a long, I mean, for people like us, like it's not, it's not all that much different from what we do on a daily basis, right? Yeah. Like, just we anyway needed part of us I, I'm pretty sure was just like yes now you know I don't have the obligation of having to like go out and like <laughs> show my face to people yeah, so it was yeah. cool um, so that's nice you've been just getting work constantly or is it like a thing that has impacted uh, do you think it has impacted like the amount of work you're getting or is it the oh same for sure thing? no 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 like nothing new is coming that's for okay. sure like I mean whatever I'm doing right now is stuff that like has already been sort of ongoing and it's like all been in the pipeline so yeah, it's you know like doing project but yeah like nothing new uh it's quite stressful actually but i mean then again like we're what i think over halfway through it now yeah it's what yeah, yeah so it's like what 10 I days mean, to go at least for now for now nobody knows <laughs> we'll what see. he's going to do but yeah, and yeah. so um i guess a lot of people know how you started off but for people that don't know uh, mm. uh could you give us like a quick like basic rundown of how things started because it starts from an engineering student to a completely different uh, you know yeah. sphere of life completely yeah um, you know the funny thing is it seems like such a long time ago it actually kind of was like it's <laughs> 12, 12 years back yeah ish oof um, but um, it, it's like the internet has just transformed so much in the past 10 years that you know like those days seem like it's oh, so yeah. far away now yeah, but I mean, uh, I'm you know not that, he, I'm not uh, I'm not that old I'm quite young but I still feel like because <laughs> because yeah stuff has really progressed very quickly yeah it has so, so yeah, it was, yeah it was basically a case of uh, I was in college and um, like I mean I was I was playing in you know college bands and stuff but the agenda with college the college bands was basically like it's it's like you play your annual you know festival or whatever and you play the shows and um, you know you you do that and like you sort of keep going and there wasn't all that much uh, you know this thing about um, about you know just focusing on like making music because I mean at the end of the day it was an outlet right for like for engineering yeah, students yeah. who want yeah. to like, have a good time so like for me I mean I also felt a little funny about the thing you know I want to explore all of this stuff but um, you know so it's more than just a time pass when I don't want to be studying um, not to say that like the bands that I was that I was in uh, didn't care for writing original music at all like they did but like I mean this whole thing you know this whole sub culture of you know this whole DIY thing was taking off and I, and I remember like because this was around the time that I was getting into bands uh, really really getting into <clears throat> you know proggy bands bands like uh, Ocean Size and you know bands with like production value like you know Devin Townsend and Mishoga obviously and uh, I mean just all of this really eclectic stuff and and I was and of course you know there's like that there's that little um, golden hour so to speak like you know when you're when you're like in your late teens early 20s or whatever yeah. like there's yeah, like, that little period where you're just mean. like yeah, yeah. You're exploding right with yeah, ideas yeah. and I was just like dude you know you know whoever I would speak to about this stuff or like try and you know just nerd out about this music with like it was always a very lukewarm response so I felt like kind of uh, um, so then as a result what started happening was I just I would go online and basically I came across these forums and then through those forums uh, where you know like all these people were just nerding out about these about these crazy underground bands that like not that many people knew about uh, from there, I discovered that there's an entire legion of like, pe well, not legion, but like a, there's a bunch of people that are starting to do this thing and do it at home. You know, like yeah, they're able to put out demos 
without having to record because I, I distinctly remember there was one point of time where obviously I had no gear to record myself. All I really had was a guitar and um, there was a senior in school who's actually <laughs> um, become quite well known like in his own way and he ended up like working with Tesseract. Do you remember this? Uh, their video for um, shit yeah which song was it? Like the the crazy I think it was Eden Eden 2.0. Yeah yeah yeah. You remember that I video? I mean, all of their videos are crazy anyhow, so it's like... Uh, huh, but you remember that specific video? Oh, yeah, 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 it was like a lot of... Uh, it was probably the first video where it wasn't just a band performance. It was like a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. visual so that, things so. in there and like they had like... Obviously, it was stuff done on a green screen and whatnot because you exactly. obviously yeah, yeah. couldn't get someone like standing on a huge mountain right. and shooting. So that, yeah. so that video was done by this uh, guy called Ganesh Rao. So Ganesh, oh, was, yeah, my, okay. yeah. so Ganesh was my senior in college. And at the time, because he was local, he used to live, I mean, that that's where he was based out of, like his, his house was there. So he lived there and he didn't live on campus and all. So he had like a little basic recording setup and stuff. But, you know, so like I would reach out to him and once or twice and be like, you know, can I come and like record some ideas that I have? But I mean, he was also super busy. And then I was just like, man, you know, I felt guilty just Also, I mean, it's engineering I, college. So it's not it's like, like, it's yeah. not like everybody has time, like. Exactly. In order you know, to I mean, get time and it's very hard because the <laughs> amount of study is still like non-engineering students don't really understand how much work there is. Um, no, they don't. Yeah, it's brutal. It's pretty brutal. And um, and so and Ganesh was also like, I think he was the chief of the ed the editorial board and like all of that. So he had a lot on his plate. I remember just thinking after one year, like this is not going to happen. You know, clearly I can't go to him and keep asking him, you know, when are you free? Um, so then I then I happened to like come across these forums and I was like, yo, you know, there's these people doing it at home uh, using nothing like a pod XT and a guitar and a laptop and a you know bunch of software. And I was like, yeah, say yeah. So um, and then as it so happened, sorry, this is like a very long version of like the story. No, that's but, completely fine. So as it happened, like then I got in touch with, uh, you know, who became like my mentor and like very, very good friend Zoran. Um, yeah. A lot of people know, a lot of people know him as, you know, Black Stride Blues' younger brother, but like, people really need to like, Yeah, you know, they, they need familiar. to know him for his mixing and, you know, production skills. His production skills are insane. And his guitar playing, and yeah, his yeah. song. Holy shit. You know, anyway, anyway that's a, yeah. that, that, that's a different level of, uh, that's a different conversation of fanboying altogether. Yeah. Like, I mean, if he sees this, like, he'll, he'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I used to fanboy really hard. But, um... <clears throat> So I got in touch with him and I started asking, you know, asking him questions online on Orkut back when that was a thing. And uh, I would ask him like all sorts of um, technical questions about, you know, recording and mixing and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, then I just started realizing, all right, cool, you know, like this is this is fun and it works and like I can do stuff on my own time. And um, yeah, so that was basically it, man. And one thing just led to another. Before I knew it, I was like, I have enough material to, uh, to you know, have an album's worth of stuff ready and uh, then I mean then after that of course like a lot of things just started falling into my lap because of course this was very very early days when SoundCloud and SoundClick yeah, and all yeah, of these yeah. were not popular because home recording wasn't <coughs> sorry wasn't such a such a, a, a common thing you know like nowadays of course everyone every guy and their dog has a focus right and oh, yeah. you know a, Dude, did you see the new like uh, Audient Evo it's yeah a, it's a new end of like it's yeah it's this much? It's ridiculous. It's like as as big as my hand probably and it's yeah. insane and it has like preamps that are as good as like any, you know, other like RME Fireface or anything like that. So the, it's uh, the, the, the uh, even when like it was, I guess it was relatively after a point of time when I even started getting into it. But even like it wasn't that point where the technology and that concept had really blown up. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I was even when I started, it was like plugging like one line in into my laptop, oh, and then of you know course. just a converter for your guitar cable, and that's it. <laughs> so totally, that's it's completely yeah, that's different now. Right. And yeah. uh, so the, just to rewind a little bit, yeah. where where did music come into your life? Like, was it something that was oh. like a constant thing, or was it something that you developed as like a teenager or? you know i think it's something that was always a constant thing like when i was very young like i think i was five or six and uh my parents basically like pushed me into uh you know piano lessons and stuff and i had a, quite a few years of like learning tabla as well so you know as a result what happened was like even though like i don't have a, a much of a knowledge of theory anymore because i just sort of forgot all about it uh, mm -hmm. but like 
very early on like my melodic and rhythmic sense particularly like just became very strong because you know when you're a kid and you learn these things even though it's very academic and it wasn't something that i was particularly like crazy about it was yeah. just an extracurricular activity that i was doing um but i think like yeah, a lot of fundamentals just sort of got baked in pretty pretty early so suddenly in your teens when you discover all of these bands that suddenly you know these rock rock bands and metal bands and stuff where you're like whoa you know like music is suddenly cool um then like for me like the the curve you know to grasp yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot of fundamentals it it took much less time than it would have if i was say starting out from scratch yeah, so, so why did you uh, pick up the guitar was it like something specifically you remember watching or was it just like okay this is something that's cool and or you saw the people doing it yeah a bit of bit of all of that i think it was just like the you know guitar was much less about being an instrument with which with which you can express yourself it's more of a symbol like yeah. the guitar and especially you know in the early 2000s like um you know the or even before that like late 90s early 2000s the guitar signified rebellion you know and it signified yeah. basically like saying fuck you um you know to it, it was basically because like for all the lack of you know social you know for all the social awkwardness and like all of that stuff and all of these other you know things that i had you know being always like kind of bullied in school and um you know just like other shit like suddenly like the guitar just becomes this safe space you know where yeah, it's like it's become it becomes your weapon where you can you know not only can you not only is it like protecting you but it's also like a whole thing of like you know screw you to like yeah, whoever yeah 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 so um so i th- it was a combination of all of those things and of course like once you spend enough time with it and then you fall in love with it and then you're like all right oh wow you know like there's all these possibilities but yeah yeah and uh, uh, another thing that i noticed when i started out was you didn't mm. really have any music out you had like sort of these you know clips that you would put up but yeah. through these clips i guess i'm i mean i don't know which is why i'm asking you the question is mm. you were able mm. to you know work with bands and get some stuff going in that direction very early on you know like yeah. the uh, the stuff you did along with anupam uh, yeah. uh how did that come about because you're still like i can understand like now it's a very common trajectory for somebody to you know start a band start writing music recording mm-hmm. that music and because they're good at recording that music they you know also become a mixing engineer or a mastering engineer yeah. and they get stuff on the side how did that process come about i think um at this point of time i should just take a moment and like just express how grateful i am to anupam you know for uh giving me that opportunity because uh i was at a crossroads in my life you know where i you know of course once engineering is over and stuff you know then the question comes like do you want to get real yeah you know and yeah. like what do you want to do and like you know the whole let's give the cat exam and stuff and then what happened was um i of course like anupam had been sort of doing the diy home recording thing by himself for a while now even though like he wasn't necessarily like writing mm-hmm. he was more like producer producer like engineer engineer you know um not so much like the diy like songwriter recorder you know yeah, like yeah, he was yeah, yeah. like the guy who people would go to but um so i while i was like in that post uh, engineering little interim period you know while i was just shopping around for for jobs and you know like considering doing mba and mba um i i reached out to him being like you know listen if you need an assistant or something and you know as it turns out he had just started a company uh where uh, you know which where he was basically sort of formalizing his whole structure of you know like his whole studio and just sort of you know giving it a slight bit more legitimacy for lack of a better word um you know and uh, and so yeah you know he basically he took me under his wing and like what happened as a result was that every day for a period of i think a year and a half Six days a week, I would spend close to ten hours, literally, like on the computer, like on the door, just recording bands, editing. Because he was the go-to guy, right? Yeah, for yeah, yeah. Pretty yeah. much yeah. NCR and North, in you know, South, you know, up the northern any, hemisphere. I mean, any band, if that was also a time when I remember that time as being uh, bands would come, bands would start and actually put out, you know, records. Yeah. So, you know, bands would. really be serious about you know okay we're a band we have a couple of songs and now we need we need to get them recorded and yeah. anupam was the only guy like uh, yeah well, so i can imagine like the only guy at least in like the whole metal uh, 
Um, that's the thing. See, like, that's that's yeah. I think that uh, in his case and in my case, eventually, like, was the distinguishing factor because you know engineers were engineers, musicians were musicians, and there were very few people who were sort of, you know, who could engineer but think like a musician. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, so it's like you get the songs and you get the music and you get what they're going for. You sort of you also understand the mechanics of playing, so you can also coach people and they listen to you because yeah, they're like, yeah. he knows what. So that I think like worked really well, and um, I mean, of course, like being in that place where, first of all, because you're doing it out of your house, you know, and like you're using well, pretty bare bones setup, but able to achieve so much, your costs are low, so you don't yeah. have to charge as much, you know. So as a result, like we got a lot of work, like a lot of work. Yeah, that's another thing that's really important because yeah. I get a lot of questions from a lot of people who want to yeah. get into mixing and mastering, and they're like, yeah. you know, how should I? uh charge yeah. people and how mm. what how what kind of charging setup or everything should i have yeah. and uh, the answer i have is like there's no real sort of defined way in which you can do it because until unless you start working and uh, working and until and unless people listen to your stuff you can't really yeah. charge for any of your services like, like the first stuff i ever did was for friends which was ac- absolutely free Yeah. But it was because of those things that people liked even if like somebody likes if you do an EP or an album and or even a single and if somebody mm. likes that one song and wants to hire you then if somebody comes to you saying that I want you know to get stuff done from you then you can you know be like okay now I'm in that position where I can charge yeah. somebody so I yeah. think that's really important there's a lot of people who are just headstrong on on you know what I'm not going to do stuff for free I mean obviously like it's a <laughs> it's so chicken and egg isn't yeah. it you know it's like you know what comes first like how do you you know obviously you want to get to a point where you where you feel like you know your work, work is worth something and you charge for it but like you need some sort of definitive like work that's out there that's like your calling card right like that people yeah. know you for so i mean fortunately in my case um like you know this is i mean interesting like a uh, thing that i would the contrast that i could maybe point out is that in anupam's case for example uh i mean yeah he did have like a diy project of his yeah. own long ago yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh one of the like uh, people he got a lot of work because you know he was the guy who sort of identified this niche in the market and he like latched onto it whereas i think in my case because it was a little more common in like early 2010s like you know 2010 mm-hmm. 11ish so what worked for me was the fact that i had this this record out yeah 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 and it ha- and it happened to do like reasonably well so i think as a result of that there was you know of course like the, it was you know decent songs but also like yeah the production value it's all sort of complemented each other you know and as a result like it was like suddenly without having produced anyone i already had like a a sound you know um so it's crazy how these things happen but yeah go on sorry so yeah let's 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 talk about that actually because i think that's yeah. um i mean that first record is yeah I'm sure you think it's quite you know immature and older or young like young uh, the, 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 what should I say rebellion based type music compared to what you wrote later on which is <coughs> probably what you know most musicians and artists think about once they start making more and more stuff but that record I can even like you can still go back and listen to that record today and it still matches up with most of the stuff that's out today in terms of the production because mm. that's how good it is and it Thank just you. it just owes to the fact again of that point that you made that you sat in mm. one place every mm. day for like 10 hours mm. working 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 on getting stuff and then i think mm. once you have that basic thing down then you can sort of you know try stuff out or try different techniques and try stuff with your own stuff so how did that whole thing come about because you were obviously writing music it, mm. because because it's it's not like okay the old thing of that a record label would find you and give you all that money to make your first record like yeah. that doesn't happen anymore like what happened yeah. to guns and roses or any of those big bands that yeah. had like that initial record that's so insane yeah. doesn't happen anymore so doesn't happen you i mean you started off with writing the songs and then you 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 know reached out to certain people with a certain amount of fan following so that also got you some stuff in um mm. but then it sort of became this actual like first product from india that was beyond <laughs> india because at that point of time everyone 
and everyone was like we need to make it in india we need to make it in india yeah and uh, i think it's still uh, uh, an idea that hampers the uh, productivity and you know just scale of a lot of bands because they're like you know what i need to make sure that my hometown gig is nice or stuff like that i want to tour around india and i yeah. think that was like for me as a young musician i was like i have absolutely no way of connecting with people in india Mm. but i saw this as an example of oh you can still make music and you can get somebody like a basic records which at that point of time for young people was like the thing mm-hmm. not knowing about what labels are but you know we're still sure, like yeah. wow. um no like holy shit like okay we always knew people made good music but yeah. we were, it it always felt like oh you know the outside world doesn't really care for india but uh, that was yeah. like a really good example for young people going like okay what this can actually work So how did sure. that whole process come about because I'm not, I'm sure you had no plans on um uh, thinking no. in that grand scale or anything like that because you you must have just been like I have these bunch of songs they're nice yeah. I'm going to put it out Well I mean look I think anyone who says that they're doing something and they don't have dreams that one day I'm going to tour the world and one day I'm going to you know blah 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 like you is lying because like we all fantasize about these things like in our head you know like yeah. how nice would be but of course there was no plan you know yeah. and uh, and i think and a lot of people don't want to hear this because you know um because it's again it's not the answer that they're looking for but there's a huge amount of luck involved you know like you oh, have yeah. to be at the right place at the right time and there's no way you can plan to be in the right place at the right time you just happen to be there and you also have to like uh you have to create the circumstances which allow that sort of luck to you know those lucky opportunities sort of fall fall in your path like i mean just to give you an example you know all the international collaborators that were there on that record of course like i didn't have their email addresses lying around yeah. right i mean i had no idea i mean i was i was fans of those two people i mean it's crazy because like i mean you know i grew up like listening to marty friedman play and i i mean i was a huge fan of like what dan was doing with tess at the yeah. time and and even like um you know with when anup messaged me online saying that you know like and i checked out his work and i was like what the hell like that's a ridiculous drummer right and like so all these people got in touch but i realized the reason they got in touch was because the material was out there and it was there and it was easily available because there wasn't that much of a sea of information and um interestingly at that point of time i think youtube correct me if i'm wrong but i i don't think like you know just say like any bands like entire back catalog today you can find it on youtube right yeah it um, wasn't there no it wasn't it there it wasn't there no 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 it wasn't a thing because like you know labels were scared of it you yeah. know uh, yeah. there was all of that it was a very gray thing with you know whatever uh, transitioning into that whole online streaming plat- uh, zone so streaming like streaming was not really a thing at that point it wasn't right? a it thing was, exactly right. yeah so what, as a result what happened was because you know say our generation of you know kids that were putting out uh, demos and stuff like we sort of owned that yeah airspace you know the myspace uh, you know all of these things like we and of course youtube so as it so happened like a bunch of, most of these people they came across stuff while they were just browsing you know like yeah. related artists related related yep. related yep. and oh um, yep. Yep. at least i know that's how marty found me because otherwise yeah. how the hell was i yeah. going to get in touch with all of these people Definitely. right so and and i think what ha- that and it also like the penny dropped for me that made me realize that all these guys as accomplished as they are they always on the lookout for cool people to work with yep. because you know that's what makes great artists great it's that they don't sit on their ass and think oh you know what i've got all this success and i've made it so i'm just going to you know whatever you know? they're yeah. always trying to challenge themselves you know and like work with younger kids because younger kids have their finger on the pulse of what's relevant what's yep. current what's new whereas you know as you get older and as you get more sort of closed in to your own comfort zone then you start sort of you know detaching from what's what's current and what's contemporary and what's relevant um but another you know a completely unrelated i mean similar analogy i could give is maybe someone like say a gordon ramsay you know you look at the yeah. guy's cook you know the guy goes out of his way to like you know think out of the box and like you know meet younger cooks you know from all over the world you know he goes into their villages and what not you know i mean so basically i realized that these guys are also like on the lookout for you know young and uh, young people who they think are sort of you know challenging existing um conventions of you know 
because of course like within the realm of the daw there is no limit to yeah, what you exactly. can do there is no this thing like this needs to be able to be performed in front of a live audience what yep. no yep. only audience is me like in my headphones and i love layers so i'm just going to put yeah, all yeah, of yeah 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 <laughs> so i think you know just uh, so all of these factors sort of i think those stars aligned and it just created those opportunities of course like taking those opportunities is also important and yeah. i think you know i did well enough that i think i uh, i also recognized that you know i was onto something i mean not necessarily i didn't think that i was the bees knees or anything for sure but because there were so many bands that were you know all our contemporaries like your cloud kickers you know peripheries tests you know your animals and of course like all the burgeoning like you know chimp spanner monuments all yeah, the yeah. the artists that weren't so uh, weren't as highly rated as some of the others for whatever reason um you know it, all of all of that generation sort of started out together i think like yeah. or relatively within the space of like 3 plus minus 3 4 years from each other so i don't know man like it was it was it was a very interesting time there was a lot of um, ultimately i think you know what we really wanted was to just uh we were hearing something in our head which we were like uh haven't heard anything like this before to bana lete yeah 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 and i, I think that's another important point to note because you were making that music at a point of time where when you started making that nobody else was making that it wasn't cool it was very yeah. nerdy it was yeah. very uncool actually if anything it yeah. was like eh, because at that metal in that bedroom right because yeah. at that point of time not e- e- even that and even like guitar players were like i want to be the fastest guitar player they didn't want to like nobody yeah. thought of like songwriting or guitar players and their extent of songwriting was like writing ballads where they can solo over for like 5 yeah. minutes um, yeah, yeah. so nobody was making riffs that were difficult to play yeah and suddenly i i think a lot of guitar players felt very jealous like okay we can play fast but what's yeah. this like uh, i can string skip you know weird like tapping sure. patterns but these riffs uh, are in odd meters and you think even so? in yeah definitely definitely You know, even in four-four meters, there are odd things going on. How yeah. am I supposed to mute my hand so quickly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a little thing. People, things. people yeah. were really pissed off. Like guitar players were really pissed off. Like I remember a lot of young guitar players just going like, "Oh, you know, that's too fast." I'm like, "But didn't you want to play fast in the first place?" Oh no, but yeah. not like that. You know, so it was. <laughs> it was a very. Uh, it was after like a year or two when like guitar yeah. players were like. Oh okay. I remember yeah. the amount of people that used to be all oh it's just zeros and ones. Oh yeah yeah I got that quite a bit yeah. <laughs> Except that it's not bro. Like, it's not. On. And <laughs> even if it is like okay a lot of people cite like bands like After the Burial or stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are still songs. Big deal it's groovy and, as shit. I mean it's the song. Th- and and when and when that yeah. breakdown hits I've seen yeah. people hit each other like nobody's business at a gig right yeah. so oh yeah you can sit at home and you can cry about the fact that you're you know playing fast and whatever and you can't play yeah. that but these guys are like touring the world and these guys are making something happen <laughs> right so i which again yeah. goes back to the thing of you you know jumped on something not just because you wanted you saw a trend it was also what you liked but it was also yeah. in a period of time where you thought this was exciting and new and interesting to do so that's uh, be, besides me, luck yeah, yeah. yeah besides luck yeah. it it's also how yeah. you uh, internalize the situation you're in and make that work for yourself and another thing that's incredibly important <laughs> is i think mm. what worked for you and what worked for most people at that point of time because i've been lucky enough to meet a lot of these people in one way or another is mm. you're amazing people Arey. like you're incredibly fun to chill with Which I get I, that. No, no, for sure. That makes sense, man. You have to. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, what does this matter if you can't be good people, right? I mean, yeah. sorry, rhetorical statement, but like yeah. everybody can do th- do a prescribed job, but it's <laughs> it's that process of having fun in that whole thing that yeah. makes you know that extra thing come out. Like, yeah, great records aren't made by. a corporate mentality where you sit by the clock like okay you know what okay record next take not give any opinion or not give any you know uh, note or anything like that and the band just comes in head strong and goes out great records are made when producers and people work together and get stuff done in interesting ways that haven't been done before yeah. 
um yeah yeah for sure so so that's i think one major thing that a lot of people don't really focus on cuz they're too tied up in the whole either music aspect of it or the business aspect of it at the end of the day like if you're a kind person if you're a chilled out dude yeah. people will work with you and you will get people to listen to you i think you know, uh, no for sure i could agree i don't know maybe it maybe it comes from the fact that you know they like younger you know i was trying to sort of get into it in One second. There was, you know, again, like, like I. Said, oh, one on? second. Can you repeat that? Sorry. Oh, because the internet moved. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I was. Yeah. I was just saying. I was younger, so a, it wasn't particularly cool to to be doing this. And B, also, like, I think you know, when you come from a background where you've had like socially like a slightly difficult time growing up, because I know, like, I was, I didn't have the best of times when I was in school. Like, I mean, I was. Hmm. You know, yeah, 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 you, yeah. I got, a, I got a little bit of shit from you know. peers and stuff it's um, horrible it's horrible dude like kids are kids are douche bags you know yeah. and but i think ultimately what happens is like when you grow up you just become um, you you really become very grateful for when you finally finally find people who you know who sort of get you and you know who just sort of you know who sort of accept you for the way you are because like then yeah. you, you sort of grow up with this whole thing of like you know there's something wrong with me so like the moment yeah. some, you find that acceptance you just you're very very grateful for it you know and uh, I don't know I mean it's sad that that's what it has to be but you know at least in my case like I I know that like I'm very grateful that there's so many people that even give a shit you know like let yeah. alone being fans or let alone like putting money behind all of this stuff like the fact that you know like I can that this like whatever I've done or whatever you know that I did entirely for myself as an outlet has allowed me to have such beautiful conversations and experiences and you know encounters and interactions with people that i would have never otherwise like been able yeah. to reach like minded people um you know who probably who resonate a lot with similar things that i went through you know so it's crazy like i just, i don't know i'm just very very appreciative for that and that of course like the whole internet and like the way social media has built uh has just allowed for so much of that stuff to happen yeah and i think another thing that's there is you've never been like that kind of a social media person who's like on people's faces You've been in a very interesting situation where, like, you've done it to a mediocre level, in, mm. in terms of how, say, someone a brand manager or someone like that would think. You've sort of maintained that distance between, I do stuff for me personally, and then you know, share it in mm. certain ways. You you, mm. which I think is another art in itself, which people yeah. need to build on, is because. if you keep posting stuff over and over and over and over again people will just yeah. get bored because sure you know content is ever ready at all points of time so if you don't make it count or if you don't make it like specifically interesting people will not really gravitate towards it after a point of time so yeah. how did the basic records thing come about like so what was it like did they uh, just contact you or were you like okay now i can probably you know sell this outside so let me see where i can get in touch with because i know that like james from tess was yeah working with basic at that point of time i'm not sure if he still works with them or not but uh so again like man this is another one of those things where i've i've just i'm just so grateful for like the people that have been uh that you know just wanted to be a part of whatever i was doing like because it really like none of this shit would have happened without those people so i mean like obviously they were the musicians but um one of my really really close friends and i just i haven't been as you know close in touch with him in recent years as i should have is akib akib wani yeah 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 uh, you know what a beautiful beautiful soul that that kid has he's I, so nice kid, but he's seriously he's the sweetest guy of all time and at that time like he was working at rsj chief designer you know and like i remember because i had literally like i mean one of the big so i was doing this was because i had no money right so yeah. I mean, um and you know he was so sweet he just wanted to be a part of this thing you know and i um uh, and um, i mean i i told him to like of course like you know i will pay you back in some shape or form you know whatever but like he just wanted to do the cover so when he did the cover and of course he killed it and then beautiful um, cover beautiful cover right beautiful i mean till now I, you know like yeah that's one cover that i think it's out of like so my nice. out of our back catalog i think that one will stand the and test and it could of. have and it could have easily been on any album and it would have matched 
exactly so um, so he of course because he was working at rsj and they were doing a lot of they were so well connected because they were featuring a lot of international labels and bands you know on their in their magazine so he was in contact with basic and I, and i think it was his suggestion he's like likh tu kya unko matlab you know kya 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 har jaye like yeah wohi like worst yeah, I mean, you uh, won't get a reply worst you won't get a reply as it turns out he did send it, send them an email and bali who was the head of basic just replied back saying yo actually yeah i mean i've been keeping an eye on what this guy has been doing for a while and uh, definitely would be keen just uh, but i believe he was already like i believe he was looking to release it any minute now so i mean if there's we should probably have a conversation asap so because i was actually planning to just do yeah, a bit yeah, diy yeah, just put it we out we're doing it seven and it's seven we can do 2011 we were playing that was the day i was supposed to release it literally two days before that show I signed that contract uh, with Basic, and I just had to be like, "Yo, fuck," because I'd already like <laughs> put it everywhere, and then of course it ended up getting leaked. Yeah. But um, you know, uh, you know, like you're doing well when your stuff gets leaked. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. It spread like wildfire, and I remember thinking, "Okay, like I'm really upset on the one hand because." Oh you know, yeah, it's it's such a confusing feeling because you're like, "Shit, there's like a bunch of torrents," but then. Yeah. There's torrents, which means yeah. <laughs> someone took the effort to first of all somehow get it. So either they bought it, yeah, or, and then they went through the hassle of actually getting it up online and maintaining yeah. it so that people can continuously download. Download it. It's mind blowing, you know. And and I would and I would, yeah, like you said, it was such a confusing feeling because on the one hand I was disappointed that you know okay it didn't go out in the with the fanfare and everything. Uh, and on the actual release date you know it would be like oh here take the album and everyone's like yeah i already heard it yeah you know, yeah yeah but um, but on the other hand like it was al- also a feeling of like ooh you know like this is damn you know um people really want this shit you know clearly so um, so that was good so yeah i mean so again like that that opportunity that connection just sort of happened because of someone being you know kind enough to who had the contact to just reach out and you know just help me out and yeah we So w- no. was that deal for just PR and promotion, or was that for distribution? It was for distribution, everything? yeah, and distribution PR for two albums, like which okay, two albums. Them. Okay, so I it mean, was, was on yeah. uh, on the go. It was not just they were like, okay, we want this, but more. No, there was so the deal was that they would they would they signed us for that first album, and then they were like there would be an option album, which is usually like you know you either deliver an album. Um, within the contract period if you're going to deliver you have to deliver one more album within that contract period um wait what yeah um ha huh. so one more album was the option and yeah. of course like when because blinding did pretty you know well for its time um i mean not mind blowing but pretty decently uh all that considered you know it we were like yeah let's just do the second one as well you know and of course like then we were like all right cool let's we we just started to get bolder we were like maybe we can oh what if we take that risk do this do that do this do that try crowdfunding it and you know like that's the thing you know once your ambitious streak gets fired up then yeah yeah i mean and ultimately that is what can also be your downfall because you know when you when you get more and more ambitious then you start setting more and more expectations yeah yeah i think that's and like that, a very big thing to understand like just because one thing worked doesn't mean the other thing will work to the same level or less or more like it's completely again down to the circumstances and how it all plays out um yeah and the higher you get up the ladder the more difficult it will be the harder it is yeah. and what those expectations keep rising right and so that feeling when you don't meet those expectations is like is even more like it's crushing right so yeah uh, i mean no this segues into like another thing that i'm sure we would have talked about at some point anyway but like i i definitely experienced that like the band experienced that like we had a we had quite a a phase like i think last year when because we haven't played in a year but like mm. last year was a pre- was a pretty definitive moment for all of us where we were like yo like like the expectations are actually starting to crush us now like you know the weight is becoming unbearable let's just yeah. like take it easy for a little bit because you know so that happened even after like an album that was done by fucking forester 7 and was so <coughs> fucking massive sounding and like i mean i'm obviously like i have yeah. a bias cuz i know you and i love the stuff that you do but like 
I, I have also been in situations where I've had to, you know, review all this stuff based on me yeah. just being a music listener. And that's the thing Like you can put out what you personally think is the best thing you've ever done. Yeah. And there can be that one person that goes, ah, sounds like the same shit. And you're just yeah. like, dude. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Okay. So then, so uh, I, I guess at that point of time, you were still like, okay, this is just a project it eventually went from being a project to like a full scale band. Right. This then is you were like, band. this is like after, after like, the fir- yeah, yeah. Yeah. After blinding, you were like, yeah. okay, now I can probably take this out on the road. I'm sure like the weekender gig was like a good example of like, okay, people are going to come even if it's a, it was an instrumental set. And there were so many people at 3 PM. We were the first yeah. band. So I was we like, I, I was remember going hard. with the first time they're going to play with you were there? a singer. No, no, I wasn't there. Uh, but like I was like I saw it because they had live streamed it so right 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 yeah I was like the first time they're going to actually play with a singer is going to be huge yeah and then it was that Lamb of God gig wasn't it yeah 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 yeah, and I remember seeing that and I was like you know sometimes you see bands and you see them suddenly going up and you're like whoa when how did that happen I saw that and I was like this makes complete sense really okay Yeah, yeah yeah I saw that and I was like, this makes complete sense because if a band of that stature is to come, if India is showcasing something along with those people, like this is, this makes sense. And that was the point of time you got in touch with Devesh and, you know, because then you had to t- take the decision of flying Dan d- down, right? Down, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so stuff like that all these kind of logistics is people need to understand because it's very easy to form like an internet band and it's very yeah. easy to just you know get people from here and there and you know do these amazing things with a lot of people but when you have to get down to playing it's yep. it's it's very hard tell like, me about it like it's hard Jesus. just to yeah. manage it if your drummer is in, a, in another city in your country forget a completely different country like miles and miles and miles away yeah. Um, so, uh, was that point of time where you were like, okay, now we can probably do this. Let's figure this out and let's start working on the next thing. So was it still, you know, you writing on your own or did you finally then at that point of time go like, okay, there's these other people here. I'm going to let them in and let them, you know, contribute to the writing and contribute to the process. Honestly, I think like I welcomed it with open arms because like I said, you know, like one of the reasons why I started doing it was because there just weren't that many like-minded people to do it with. The idea was never uh, that it that I wanted to like be a control freak or like you know have complete control over everything. Like the, like I, I I the moment there was a suggestion of like someone wanting to be a part of it, who got it, you know, like who to, who got the vibe and who got what I was going for, I was just like yes, thank God, because you know it's I'm not one of those guys who's who enjoys you know seeing um, you know a body of musical work out from start to finish and like you know having to oversee every single step of the process like it's very stressful you know i mean incredibly uh, stressful it's very stressful and it stops being fun after a point like i mean i remember that first album for sure like after there was a point like much after all the music had been written you know and i was i was producing it and arranging and you know just like mixing and all of this stuff was going on parallelly and I just remember thinking geez dude like this is like you know it's it's becoming really hard like uh, you know I'm starting to lose objectivity how you know who can I really play it for you know but ultimately like I'm so zoned in zoomed into it that I objectivity is just gone for a toss yeah. right so so yeah when the question came of like so yeah basically again that Lamb of God thing was another opportunity that just fell into my lap because Chris uh, the drummer uh, Chris Adler had reached out I think a year or two before that, even before, like long before basic. And he was like, he had again, like seen my stuff on SoundCloud. Eh, Funny story. Like, so he, I I got a private message on SoundCloud from an account called Eagle Adler saying, (laughs) uh, you know, like, like your stuff, um, you know, look forward to hearing more. And I was like, okay, because, you know, this was, these were the days when like someone would, anyone on Facebook's last name would be Mustang. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, must be some fan. Uh, Cool. Uh, he replied back I mean like he pinged me again on that same side because I didn't reply he pinged me again he was, and he signed off like saying Chris and under that like Chris at lambofgod.com uh. and you know blah 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 and I was like wait a second oh <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> I was like, hey man, I'm so sorry. I must this message must have slipped. Uh, you know, I must not have seen this message. I'm so sorry. Like, thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, blah blah blah. And then he was like, you know, yeah, I've got this label, and would you, you know, I would love to sign you. You know, there's not much in the way of resources, but like, you know, I just want to showcase what you're doing. And I was like, uh, sure. Like, I'll hit you up when I have uh-huh. an album uh-huh. stuff ready. And of course, by that time, then basic happened and blah blah. But as it happened like after that album release and after ns7 um when lamb of god announced that they were doing that tour when they were going to be in bangalore i think what happened was bali saw what was going on and he was like oh this is an opportunity so he reached out to chris being mm-hmm. like this band has finally become a band and you know they've got people and they can you know mm-hmm. like play not mm-hmm. a studio thing anymore mm-hmm. would you be interested in having them open and chris was like immediately he was like yes 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 like i make make it happen like and we want them to be direct support you know and like not just like one of the openers and so again you know like it's just support system crazy crazy support system like um yeah so that happened and then of course on the basis of that then euroblast uh, in germany got yep. in touch yeah and it was like a cascade effect from there dude like because one, i think yeah yeah one thing just led to another there was the combination of it being an indian thing along with the attraction of like dan who has just quit uh, Tesseract you know and hmm. of course like it was a very it was a whole oh God, that was a weird time scene yeah like you know uh, and you know oh what is he going to do next and oh this is what he is doing of course like he had other things going on but like yeah. it was like oh this is like his new metal band you know like and it's an indian project and there was this whole hoopla around it and so you know a lot of these things worked in favor of you know just the train keeping the yeah. train rolling so and euroblast was possibly the first time you went out right it was the first time we yeah. uh, played outside of uh, india yeah and uh, cuz uh, i guess you must have also done a tour around it cuz uh, you know it financially no, no you didn't you just it, played euroblast and that's it euroblast that euroblast the first one they uh, they agreed to pay our expenses to and fro if we agreed that it would be an oh, excuse damn. like we wouldn't play any other shows in the year i mean we'd already done lamb of god but they were like yeah. don't do any other shows in the year make this the only show that you do uh at least outside of india mm-hmm. mm-hmm. do whatever like outside of india make this the only show that you like debut you know international yeah. Yeah. and as a you know and they would and poor guys man like they <laughs> i don't think they realized how expensive it would be to fly all of us down, you know i guess that's why they don't offer that anymore <laughs> no they don't i mean i wouldn't if i were there yeah cuz um another Thousands thing is control. like once yeah. you start making that those things work like pay- yeah. places like tech fest euroblast yeah. cuz their ar people are looking for bands so they yeah, will yeah. definitely shoot you up and i also remember you know receiving that and i was like yo euroblast what mm. and then you know obviously the question came off would they either Fun. they would pay us yeah. a certain amount of money that we'd be able yeah. to you know somehow get around working our tickets or they could pay for travel yeah either way so they were like we can't pay for travel like that's yeah. not happening that you yeah. have to figure out and we can yeah. give x amount of money so yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point i still remember i had a conversation with you at that point in time because i was really yeah. confused i was like yeah. should i do this should i not do this <laughs> and you were like dude seriously think about it cuz yeah. if you're going to do it forget the next year like that's just yeah, what yeah. you're going to do yeah. and at that point in time i was like i can't really imagine myself going away for for a year yeah. or a period of time like that where i just have to commit perfectly to this because i was in college at that point in time so i was yeah, like man. i need to finish this degree right and oh, then yeah, later yeah. What, what we can see but uh, the point is it's not that yeah. difficult to make these kind of moves once you start get the ball like the ball once rolling ball. project yeah, yeah. project mishram is like a wonderful example yeah because uh, they put out like a wonderful music and yeah. then the next show you know they're playing is euroblast and then the next yeah. thing they played was tech fest and yeah. it's not insanely hard to do it's probably i would consider harder to get touring options or get options in india in itself rather than compared to outside for um, sure i mean i can testify to that as well like so the, how was that first international experience because you were like okay it's small so you probably had like because it's the first time you, okay you've seen audiences in india but you've not seen audiences outside so i'm sure you didn't have I, an idea of how audiences work how sales work and how everything happens there that yeah, must we, have been like a completely yeah. different thing yeah. yeah to be honest though like we we were spoiled dude like i have to say <laughs> because like the very first show we played you know the three piece uh, weekend uh, like there were like a thousand people there 
and it was three in the afternoon and it was boiling hot and it was the you know whatever and when we did the lamb of god one obviously there were like some the reported yeah. number was anywhere like it was over eight thousand people yeah, 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 yeah ridiculous and then at euroblast again because it was a festival and because the head who was the headliner i think it was it must have been monuments or somebody i guess no i think tesseract was one of the headliners i can't remember who like one of the, who anyway um right so i mean all these uh it was like a huge bloody bill yeah like there was yeah. that many jeff loomis jeff loomis oh, was playing damn. Yeah, yeah yeah uh he was one of the headliners and anup was playing with him as well um, oh yeah, and, that solo album thing that they had. That, yeah, oh yeah, god, yeah, that was so good. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I mean, there was a, there were a lot of people, and I remember, dude, like I wasn't, I didn't know quite what to expect, but like people <sighs> bloody into it, man. Like, and I, I realized then that like people over here, these people have been keeping an eye on this shit, probably because it was like a very niche sort of festival. Like, it was people traveling all from all, all over the, Europe yeah. just to hear this same sound that all we've spent years. That we spent years working on in our bedroom because no one thinks it's cool, right? And like we're like we're such loners, and like we're just like you know, even the the music scene at large in India, like we're just would. I mean, I I got it from so many bands that were friends of mine being like, ah, Hancho, I mean, you know, you're a fucking virgin at 23 because you know yeah. sitting in your bedroom, you know, whatever, do 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 do. You know, you're never gonna get chicks by playing this music or whatever, whatever fucking nonsense. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, you know, you've you've traveled halfway around the fucking world, and there's t- like hundreds, if not thousands, of people come there to watch this shit that you know that you. And it it was very surreal. Like so, more than just the number of people, it was just seeing how all these people were into it, and you know, like I said, you know, the whole thing of like having con- like I had such amazing conversations over there with people because it was just like a celebration of this whole of being nerds. Yeah, it's like a right? nerd it expo. Like, it it literally was, and it, and it wasn't nerdy for the sake of you know like how mm-hmm. you know prog bands get this thing of you know like their audiences are like that you know like just sort of dissecting. Oh God, I hate that. But it wasn't like that. There were these kids who were just so overjoyed that they were like, oh, these bands that you know we've been you know jamming out to, which everyone else thinks I'm a fucking idiot for listening to. Suddenly, I'm surrounded by people who just live, breathe, eat, drink this stuff, and on a daily basis and it was just great it was a party dude. like i'm just everyone just feeling it just felt like home and um, it was great it was, it was bloody amazing that but then i'm show. sure i'm sure the contrast from that to your first tour would have been completely different because then <laughs> when you start touring it's a completely different ball game oh man and please yeah. please because uh, this is one thing that i really want to make people understand yeah please talk about tech riders the difference between India and outside. The difference is very simple. Think about it this way: you are a venue owner. Okay. Let's say you own a venue. You have to put on a show. You have to put on a show five days. Let's say let's say seven days a week. You're putting on a gig seven days a week because you own a concert venue. There's a stage. You know that the band that comes through is probably going to be drunk. They are probably going to be rowdy, and their drummer is going to beat the shit out of the drum set. The guitar player is probably going to turn his amp up to 12. Why should I put my drum kit there and have this fucker beat the crap out of it in the name of rock and roll and then leave me to fucking pay for its repairs for the next band that is due in 24 hours to come and play it again? It makes no sense. So, you know, it's... Obviously, when you first go out, it's a bit of a shock. It's like, whoa, you're like, you know, we have to carry all of our shit. We have to carry our drum set. We have to set up, we have to mic our drum set on our own. Well, it's like, yeah, it's your sound. Why Why do you expect me to like just telepathically know your sound and know what your requirements are? You want a certain sound? Get it with you. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, down to, I mean, I remember having a conversation with Tarana about this because Tarana had a bit of a culture shock when she went to South by Southwest for the first time. <clears throat> she was playing one of the showcases and I remember like she had a bit of a panic moment because she didn't have... Uh, uh, instrument cables <laughs> and, you know and it's something that you think yeah when you would probably just have a bunch of instrument cables lying around no, you know just like normal no, jack to jack no they sir they, no, they don't won't. no they don't and if you think about it logically speaking it makes sense because an instrument cable is the first thing that's going to fucking break right like 
someone's going to like ghus out it here you know yank it out there is that flat like it's going to break dude like these things are breakable so you carry your own cables and what they do provide you is with extra stuff that like they have to patch into their boards yeah, and things yeah, like that yeah. you know like stuff that is directly their yeah, stuff equipment yeah like the pa or like their monitors and those peripherals will be provided to you and the stage but like everything on that stage with the exception of those two floor wedges if you're lucky you bring it you can't just go in like and the only place where i see no dude i don't see it happening anywhere man no Seriously. nowhere 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 not even at big big festivals like i mean yeah. even at a download or a sonus like you don't see that happen why because it's like each band has is so specific with what they need especially as they get bigger and bigger like their sound they're so particular about their sound and they spend years fine tuning that sound so they go the extra mile to make sure the sound is with them yeah right so if you go side stage at a download fest you really think that they have those you know whatever amps like provided to them by the venue no, fuck no not like at all. they have a massive bloody riser on wheels with yeah. all the gear on it which they wheel onto the stage have and a just team connected yeah there. so even on a smaller level dude like i remember when when we did that first European tour of a show but when we did the first US run i remember holy shit like that for me was just do- because like when we did Europe we were you know because of course like the trajectory that we've had like we started out you know there yeah and when, then when we had to come down to reality then we were like all right cool you know enter the US market which is a whole different ball game you know now we have to like play also, with also Europe is very nice like people are nice yeah you have catering you know you get yeah. food you get the you US know, nice. is not it's not <laughs> Sorry America but you know you guys your system sucks and you know it. Uh but um but yeah so I remember like we were there and we were the opening man first of four our sound check line check rather lasted like 5 oh, minutes. I remember this story of like the yeah. the Dude. contortionist uh, yeah. tour right where yeah. I think Tesseract took like an hour to do their sound check and then everyone Because did their like, the headliner yeah. you know yeah. as we would do if it were our headliner. So <coughs> so I mean so I mean more of the story was like we uh i you know we were just looking at the contortionist guys literally like walking in and out and in and out and from the van and from their trailer to the you know to the back of the back door of the venue and back to the van to the back door and lifting heavy ass shit you know like each band member doing at least five back and forth runs boxes of merch you know hardware drum hardware yeah. case guitar cases and they had a lot of guitars so like you carry all of that shit and then you bring it all out at the end of the show no one's there to help you bro i mean if someone's there you pay them yeah and then uh, you know ensure in that whole process that nothing gets broken somehow yeah. magically it's it that was when it was suddenly you know that's when the question comes up of like is this what you want your career to be because it's work you know like yeah. forget the fairy tale ho gaya Haan. now ye kaam hai you know like this is your daily job and it is hard physical labor and it's a lot of boredom because you spend many many hours in a day you can't do anything else because you're in a van you know there's there's no scope to like really do other things like explore other things and you so have to get to the next gig so it's like a lot of driving lot of driving and there's only so much you can do when you're in a car and you so, guys also had a scare right where you had to deal with the winter and jesus dude like yeah you know van breaks down uh I mean just any number of potential logistical just every piece of logistical this thing that you add to your system is another thing that can fail at any point of time and you have to be prepared for it and you have to have a contingency plan so basically for me touring is damage control like yeah definitely it can just be summed up by that phrase like it is nothing but damage control like one and, small yeah. thing can happen and your yeah. whole tour can get delayed yeah. derailed yeah Hold right from your visa as yeah. we know yeah you can not even get on the plane or something could happen there you know like the van company fucks up or like they give you a faulty van or like you know you have a tire blow out or uh, any number of things do like you know or your trailer door breaks you know we had someone like once like try and like force their way into our trailer because of course like there are gangs everywhere right? i mean like this screams in all yeah. places yeah so there was some random town where we were parked overnight in some hotel parking lot someone came and tried to open the trailer and they couldn't but like it damaged the the door and like so then we realized that like if someone else came and tried to force it open it would open 
So now that's a thing like you have so many hours that you have to drive to the next city, but you also have to figure out how to fucking fix this shit because you can't park your trailer now and go away because someone else could just walk right in and steal your shit, right? So, like I said, like it's just damage control, troubleshooting, damage control. Tr- you're just always stressing about how to fix shit. So, yeah, I mean, like if that's if that kind of lifestyle. You know, or if you get enough of a reward from the gig itself, yeah, from yeah, those 30-40 yeah. minutes on stage, good for you. But you know, it it was a big reality check for me in the sense of like, this is not what I want to do. Like, <laughs> I'm very grateful that I've done it and I've experienced it to the hilt. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know if there are bigger bands that I could. I mean, this goes into the thing of you know, like what more is left there to achieve in that whole zone. And I guess. You know, having toured with bands like the Deftones and like you know with Baby Metal and stuff, I guess the yeah, only thing what, bigger than I mean, like touring like, with them is like either touring with like Metallica or something like that, like or, 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 or like or being the headliner that plays yeah, those shows. Yeah, 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 yeah. 